Welcome to AI, the Future of Us, a podcast-style video series that explores the ways in which AI is shaping our future and how we can prepare for the changes that lie ahead. I'm your host, Fred Tekiner, and today we are joined by Forrest Brazil, who is Google Cloud's Head of Developer Media. Thank you for here, being here today, Forrest. Fred, it's great to be here. So we are seeing, you know, phenomenal amount of changes in the in the world of AI, and you know, it is also impacting the DevOps, uh, you know, community a lot as well. So, in your opinion, what are the most significant ways that AI is currently impacting the DevOps, you know, uh, people? Well, you know, AI has always, or I should say, uh, DevOps has always been a field that's been automation driven. And in a way, those of us who've, who've been in DevOps, I've been uh, closely tied to the DevOps world for you know more than a decade now. And it's always been about kind of automating yourself out of a job and moving on to the next thing, right? We did this when we were slinging physical servers and we moved them to virtual machines. We did this when we moved out of the data center and into the cloud. We did this as we moved from uh, you know lift and shift cloud migrations into more uh, managed services. We did this now as, as we're starting to move more toward serverless and, and Kubernetes and these higher and higher levels of abstraction. But in some ways, the, the job has never changed in that time. We're always seeking that next level of automation. But we're always seeking uh, ways that we can continue to provide safe, resilient, quick deployments of code to, to production and maintenance and security of the code that's there. None of those responsibilities for DevOps folks are changing whatsoever in the world of AI. But what we're seeing is that certain tasks that historically have been kind of time consuming and have taken a while, you know, writing that backup script, porting that code from this language to that language, generating this giant piece of YAML that you're going to use to configure whatever you're deploying. It turns out that like AI code assistants make some of that stuff easier to do. Now, that's not to say that it's perfect. It's not to say that there's not responsibility on your part to continue to look at that stuff and make sure that it's correct, but it is tremendously speeding up the amount of uh, time and effort that you need to spend actually generating this code from scratch. And I think for a lot of DevOps folks, that's exciting, right? Because especially if you're, you know, you're, you're not like a software engineer by vocation or a software developer, you don't think of yourself as someone who just writes a lot of code day in and day out. It could be the case that having that scaffolding generated for you by AI actually is is really nice. Uh, and so I, in that in that respect, I think it's uh, it's an exciting thing for DevOps folks to look at where AI can help. But again, there are downsides that come with that as well. You've got to be much more careful about what's getting generated and make sure that you actually uh, are, are comfortable signing off on that. You've got to take professional responsibility. So what I'm hearing then that, you know, DevOps people are not going to be losing their jobs. They'll be using to improve their productivity and at the same time be really careful that the output that is generated from these, you know, tools is really up to the standard and it will meet the requirements. Yes, I want to be, I never want to say, you know, oh, nobody's going to lose their job here because again, going back to the very beginning of the ops world, because the landscape changes and the level of abstraction changes, uh, if you get really comfortable using a particular set of tools and you really stake your professional identity to that, you're probably always going to be at risk. 20 years ago, there were a lot of ops people who were kind of point and click, uh, like, you know, working in Windows Server and, and this sort of thing, uh, and they just weren't comfortable coding. And, and those have become increasingly fragile jobs as automation has taken over. Over. Uh, and I think you're going to see that with AI too. You'll hear a lot of people saying, well, you don't really need to learn to code now, or you won't need to learn to code soon because these AI tools can, can spit out a lot of generated code for you. I actually think that's quite the opposite. I think it's going to be more important than ever that you learn to code, that you get very comfortable reading, writing, understanding code. Because uh, again, there's going to be so much more code generated now. The barrier to creating code and config has been lowered by these services. So it's going to increase the absolute amount of code that's out there in the world. And someone's going to have to debug that stuff, harden it, maintain it. You know, that person could be you. You could make an awful lot of money doing that. But if you're not comfortable just diving into that code space, then, you know, I think you're going to see your opportunities increasingly sidelined. Yes, I, I totally agree with that, actually. And... And where do you see the, you know, the most pressing ethical considerations, you know, surrounding, you know, AI development and use in particular around the DevOps as well? That's a very interesting question 
because I think as as DevOps people, we don't often think of our work as having a strong ethical component. You know, we're we're making sure the lights stay on, right? That's kind of that's kind of cut and dry. There's not a lot of nuance to it. But uh, first and foremost, anytime you're working with these AI. Uh, these systems that are capable of generating code, you've got to be very careful and knowledgeable about what you put in there. Uh, we've seen a bunch of news stories over the past few months about folks who have put proprietary or sensitive things uh, into these services, not realizing or, or not being aware that uh, they're then being used as training data or possibly even being exposed directly to uh, folks outside of your company's control. So anytime you're looking at using one of these um, AI assistant type services, make sure that you're very, very clear and that your company's very clear about whether it's okay for you to be putting their proprietary code in there and what's going to happen to it once it gets there. Uh, there are services that, you know, are, are cool to use, I'm sure. Just make sure that, you know, you, you think very carefully about that. You don't want to get yourself into an ethical conundrum um, at your company. And as well, I think this gets really important when you think about how you're going to conduct yourself professionally as it relates to bringing new people into the industry. I've heard a lot of people say, you know, hey, uh, this AI assistant is almost like my new junior engineer. I can give it tasks and it'll spit back code at me. I don't need to bring on an apprentice. I don't need to have someone new come in and learn beside me anymore. I think that's a very short-sighted and honestly somewhat professionally unethical way of thinking. I think it's going to continue to be very important that you find ways to bring in humans into that loop, make sure that they're available to learn um, and that you're not uh, kind of... Uh, you just relying on your own context to be the only human in the loop. Uh, otherwise, you know, eventually you're going to move on. Uh, the, the company, the team's not going to have that human expertise that they need. So you're going to have to think about ways to bring in juniors and find ways for them to learn and grow even in the presence of AI. That's a big open problem in the industry. I think there's a lot of value to be gained by helping to figure that out, but there's tremendous danger in assuming that AI is going to uh, eliminate the need for you to continue to grow the next generation of engineers. I would never assume that. Yes, I, I totally agree. And I think we'll be seeing, you know, engineers will become more and more important on the contrary, actually, because the ones that are really competent who can understand what the code can do, I yes. think will shine through as well. Right. I think you're, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. I mean, it's hard for us to intuit about leverage, right? Kind of in the same way it's hard for us to think about exponential growth. Our brains don't really work that way. But having these AI tools at your fingertips massively increases the amount of leverage you're able to provide as a senior engineer. Now, what that means probably directly for your career is you want to make sure you're getting as close to the core value prop of the business as possible. There's a lot of DevOps people out there that are working on internal tools. There were your seven layers of tools deep removed from the customer uh, and you know, your, your customer is an internal team who's a customer of an internal team, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and while, yes, there can be value in that, I think now is the time to think very seriously about, hey, is this little you know internal set of scripts that I'm maintaining, is that just something that you know could probably be more or less generated by AI? And I need to go work on what's really, really effective and highly leveraged for the company. Those type of roles are the things that are going to uh, be highly in demand and uh, have a, a lot of uh, future as opposed to things that just seem kind of undifferentiated. And with that, so what are the, the some key skills that you know individuals should possess to be successful in this new era that we are entering, right? From the DevOps point yeah. of view, and that's that's kind of my last question as well to you for us. So you know, because it's everyone's mind that you know where should I invest? Where what should I go and learn in this new world? Of course. Now, just to be clear, there are still lots and lots of opportunities to do things that are a lot older than AI. I mean, there are still a lot of enterprises out there out there that are that are catching up to you know the the technology world of, of 2007, let alone the world of 2023. So I'm not trying to say that everything's going on overnight. Now AI is the only thing you need to know. But if you're looking future forward, and you want to put yourself at the cutting edge. We already talked about make sure you're, you learn to code, that you're confident about that, that you keep expanding what I would call your uh, personal mental context window. AI systems, LLMs, uh, they have this little context window of a few thousand text tokens that help them provide relevant answers to your question. And that's all they've got. You as a human being have a tremendously wide context window that's made up of your general technical expertise you've learned over your career, as well as your specific knowledge about your company's constraints and business needs. That's unique value you bring to the table. So continue to widen that, grow that, practice learning and training. Don't get 
mentally lazy and just try to make AI fill in all these gaps for you. You have a ton of unique human value to bring into the table. So lean into that. We already talked about getting close to the, the business's value prop, right? Not getting sidelined seven teams deep in internal tools and aren't really moving the needle. Um, but I would say use these AI generated tools where they make sense. It, there's going to be a lot of them. There's going to be, whether it's generative AI tools like a BART or a chat GPT, or whether it is just AI being further injected into the operational services, the managed services that you use in the cloud today. Uh, your part of your job as a, a professional software engineer, a professional DevOps person is to make smart and cost effective choices about when and how to deploy, to integrate, to use those tools. Uh, sometimes we call that vendor engineering, uh, and that's only going to get more important. It's going to be a long time before any AI is pulling the trigger on whether or not to buy a tool, right? That's something you're going to have to evaluate very carefully, compare these tools, make the choice that provides the most leverage for your business. Uh, and then finally, one specific piece of advice I'll throw in for out know you'll like this because you come from the data world like the future belongs to data scientists but let's be honest data scientists can be kind of sloppy you know i, I mean look at uh, those jupiter notebooks and all this there's a lot of need for data engineering prowess um, and that's pipelines that's uh you know uh, clusters those are things that you understand as a devops person if you're looking for a, a tweak to put on your career that i think will provide a ton of opportunities for you look into what it would take to become a data engineer it's it's your same wheelhouse of work but it's work that directly supports the creation creation and deployment of these AI and ML systems. It's going to be much in demand for a long time to come. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today, uh, Forrest. I agree with you. It is more about, I think, uh, playing with the bricks, right? So you, we will have lots of bricks out there and how we engineer that to get the optimal solution, I think, will be the key. We are just going to have more support doing that. It has been incredible and insightful to hear your thoughts on this and we look forward to seeing how AI will continue to shape the world around us and we hope that our viewers will be inspired and embrace the you know, potential opportunities. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks so much.